Hello my Sock Universe. What a difference a week makes. Last week, and I'm fully guilty of that, I said that you were completely washed, losing to Lazio so late, their horrible Allegri should be out. And while I still maintain that the Allegri time is over, you actually had a pretty good week. Revan avenging the loss against uh, Lazio in the cup and then also winning against Fiorentina. Finally again a win. And I think it was overall deserved win, although there was some lucky things at the end. Uh, also Napoli looking completely bad last week against Atalanta and now hmm, having a good showing for once. Quara back in the lineup. That might have helped. Napoli scored uh, really, really nice goals there as well. What did not change is that both Milan clubs are winning. They will finish one into two. Milan in the league, very, very likely both are going in the Champions League. And both are set for this horrific Milan derby where Inter could win, clinch the title with a win over Milan, which they have been doing rather convincingly in 2023. It's a new year. I hope things change because Milan actually looked quite settled at this moment quite good although it was a comfortable win overall and then of course with a little meta of the rome derby where again the narrative switched uh lazio Rai riding high roma having a bad showing at lecce yeah roma win that derby lazio losing two games a week there you go it can within a week it all can switch but i want to start uh to quickly recap the coppa italia yes i made some short shot with as well i mean uh juve's 2-0 win over lazio was over convincing i would say i mean uh the first half was relatively level without many big chances but then chiesa in the 50th and Vlaovic in the 64th made it a 2-0 scoreline probably was a goal too high over overall but you will win that one and go in the return leg against lazio and may i just say i hate two-legged cup semi-finals uh yes also, the format of the Coppa Italia is not the greatest, let's face that as well, because there are hardly any surprises unless you call a smaller team from Serie A going up, and, uh, but they barely have a chance. Yes, it gives you nice um, big name fixtures come the semifinals or maybe even the quarterfinals, but overall it's a pretty paltry uh, cup format and having semifinals and two legs just makes no sense, especially with a three week gap in between. And yes, I also blame UEFA for, for, for that. Why is the Champions League and the Europa League, why are those ties not played within? more or less a week of each other uh, instead of having the usual two week wait that we used to have in the 90s and even I think into the 2000s rent over I really hate it Fiorentina against At Atalanta was uh, just a one nil score with a beautiful absolutely stunning winning goal by Mandragora uh, but so many chances missed by Fiorentina uh, it was already in the loss against Milan if Fiorentina would have a striker that actually puts away goals like they had with Vlahovic before he went to Juve and kind of cannot miss any anything or cannot hit anything anymore. <laughs> Should have said it the other way around. Uh, Fiorentina would be much higher in the league. They are a absolutely exciting side to watch. Um, they will rue quite some misses here. Uh, I think that is a game that could have uh, ended 2-0. And now they go back to Bergamo, where I think Atalanta will probably turn, turn around. We're looking at another Juve-Atalanta final. Or will it be Juve-Fiorentina? We gotta see. I mean, we got a preview of Juve-Fiorentina this past weekend, which leads us to the past weekend. Uh, but we're not starting in Turin. Um, we had a big one in the relegation battle, where Sassuolo had a 2-0 lead at Salernitana. I was Antana in the second half come back and get a stoppage time equalizer. Let's see, let's see if this uh, wall, wall, this will mean I don't think Salantana will get anywhere and Sassuolo look like a team that's about to get re uh, relegated. Milan cruising over Lecce. Uh, and I was surprised with the lineup. Very attacking. You have Pulisic and number 10 roll and then you had the front line of Giroud and to the left Leon, to the right Chuk Weiser. Whoa! That's adventurous, but I think against Lecce you, you can do it and paid off immediately. Chukwese assisting Pulisic who takes a shot from the edge of the box, making 1 0 after 6 minutes. That settles the game. Then an Adley corner is headed in by Giroud 2 0. That's the game done. Again, I have to ask why is Milan playing at home in the third jersey? That's why I'm wearing the third jersey from three years ago. I still, I really like this third jersey, don't gag, get me wrong, but at home I want Milan to play in red and black. Uh, however, Lecce was not to be, uh, you know, easily discarded because they had uh, hit the crossbar, there was also a timid shot. 
it was really going against Lecce when Kristovic um, tries to bring down the ball with his uh, leg, open studs, and he hits Chukwese in the shoulder. I felt, I mean, the referee gives immediately a red card, and I probably from his position, I could, I, I could see that it looks uh, harsher than it was. On the other side, you know, it is a reckless uh, ch uh, challenge, but not a malicious one. So for me, the red card was a little bit harsh, but okay, one more. And then there was one more uh, where I think Lecce was hard, hard done, but it was immediately leading up to the 3 0 by Leao, where Almquist in the box is uh, checked by Theo. Probably in the modern game this is too little for a penalty, but honestly, uh, to me, this should have been a penalty uh, every day, all day. But then he's even lying on the floor there and tail with his knee. I mean, yes, he's running over, but with the knee hits him in the head. Well, I don't think this is a penalty. Uh, it's a foul in the, in the box, which uh, per definition is a penalty, but you know. Did not like that one, and you could see that Theo even is stopping. What? Uh, there's no foul given. Okay, I'll play on. I'll, 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 I'll play on. Then Adli plays a brilliant pass into Leao. Uh, you know, this was same situation. Leao makes it 3 0. Um, that was hard on Lecce. However, I still think a 3 0 scoreline was a fair one. I mean, Jovic had a good chance, but Milan then kind of a cruising because there's a Europa League tie coming up against Roma and you want to save your energies which is some, which is a luxury that Roma did not have in the derby because it's the Roman derby I mean uh, it's the it's one of the the, uh, the biggest fixture fixture in Rome and it is so funny that um, in that sense well Rome is seen as the internal city blah 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 for them it's not about the title the winning the derby in Rome is still the non plus ultra and I was actually surprised how nicely Tudor and De Rossi greeted each other ahead of the game, but you also saw at the end of the game that Roma, when they had won it, that De Rossi, uh, he's a Romanista through and through, and it all came out of him there. Uh, the game itself, I think Lazio were a little bit more the initiative, I have all the chances were for Roma. Lazio could not create many chances, uh, and so... It was a it 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 was this weird, weird game where Roma were uh, slicing through the last last defense without actually really also being too threatening. Uh, however, then after the Balacorn and forty second minute, Mancini heads it in. It's one nil Roma. At that moment, I felt maybe um, teeny. I don't want to say lucky, but you know uh, the game was in balance. Let, let let's put it. Up. But Coming into the second half, Roma had so many chances. I mean, there was one Lukaku, El Charavi had one at Pellegrini free, free kick. I think in the first 10 minutes after the uh, break, Roma should have put this game away. However, then there's also a goal uh, that was caught offside, um, correctly so. And it kind of set off Lazio a little bit, especially Guendouzi, who himself and is uh, fighting with uh, Dybala. I don't know what was going on, but you know, the heat of the Rome, there we go, uh, went, went to him and I think that Roma were targeting Guendouzi because he is a nutcase in many ways um, on that. And then Dybala went into next level trolling by just pulling out his shin pad, which is teeny tiny and I don't know why footballs these days have teeny tiny shin, shin pads. It shows it like this to Guendouzi. What was showing? Well, the shin pad shows him lifting the World Cup, where Guendouzi was of course in the squad for France. So, and he hit he, he, he that so nonchalantly, you know, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> it was absolutely next level trolling. Roma win the derby, meaning they are now in good position to secure uh, a Champions League spot, probably spot five will most likely be enough and they might have even a shot for Bologna because we all, all also see that Bologna did not win, they only played a nil-nil against Frosinone, so um, look out for Roma. Look out, out, out for Roma. I think they had really, really good cool form, and also with Atalanta not winning, will come, come, come that in, in a little bit. I think Roma low looking good uh, in a good situation. Whereas Lazio, I think they probably will need the cup, cup Italian. That will be a hard ask. I think Lazio are really um, out of it. 
at least for a Champions League, they might make it into the Conference League. Oh, it has, has to be said. Uh, the Saturday evening game was maybe not the greatest one by name, but it was actually a really good, good, good game where Tor um, Vettorino losing away to Empoli 3 2 with a very, very late goal by Nyang after Zapata had also equalized in, st in, in stoppage time. It was Cam Cam Cambiai giving an early lead to uh, M M Empoli Zapata? Equalizing once, Cancellieri 74th, re-establishes it, Zapata equalizing twice and then Nyang getting the winner for M. Empoli, meaning Torino is also going absolutely nowhere as always. Torino is the quintessential uh, mid-table team. There's no movement upward, but there's also rarely movement downward, which is kind of sad for such a traditional club, I gotta say. Uh, Monza against Napoli was maybe not on everyone's radar uh, due to Napoli being such a bad form, but actually this was a good game. Uh, Duric gave Mons, Mons the early lead, but then it really came, came alive in a 15 minute period in the second half where Ozeman with one towering header uh, gets the, e the equalizer and face plants him himself. Good thing he has the mask still. Two, two minutes later, Paul Politano. I mean, uh, it's a shot that got deflected towards Politano, takes two steps back at the edge of the box and volleys it in, in the net. Napoli have turned the game around. A brilliant, brilliant goal. And then Zielinski just four, four minutes later, again, Quara assist. Quara was also involved in the pre in, 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 the, in the Politano goal, but not with a direct assist. Uh, plays with Zielinski, who another really, at least it's a nice shot from the ed edge of the box. No way that uh, the keep, keeper can, can save it. And then just a minute later, Kolbani just pulls one back. However, Raspadori makes it 4-2. It was really, really exciting stuff. And Napoli scoring some really nice goals. Again, the Ultras um, were for a while absent. Like they claimed that the testicles of the players are. So there you go. Interesting Ultra protest as well. Uh, Napoli now in seventh spot ahead of Lazio. Will they make Conference League? Let's see. Uh, maybe Europa League. I don't know where, 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 where this is going. Atalanta. After this great performance at Napoli. Uh, losing to one car Calgary. Again, a very late... Um, Winner Viola in the 88th minute makes it 2-1. Cagliari now sitting mid-table. Yes, it is only four points ahead of Rosinone, who is he, who in the first relegation spot, but Cagliari looked down and out for, for a while. Uh, in any case, the relegation battle is probably even more exciting than anything else in, Ser in, in, in Serie A, with uh, teams being relatively, relatively close. I mean, we have uh, Cagliari at 30, we have uh, Lecce at 29, we have Empoli and Udine at 20, 28, Ellas at 27. Those are the still the ones that are at the moment safe and the Frozen 26 and Sassolo 25. Sassolo getting relegated. Uh, that's something you would not have, have thought, but they have a really, really bad spell. Only South Salentana really seem down and out at this moment. Uh, the big match uh, of the evening after Genoa beat Elas Verona 2-2-2-1. So Genoa uh, promoted team really safe, also mid-table. Was of course Juve against Fiorentina. The first half was all Juve. Vlaovic goal uh, was called, cut off because Bremer was offside, deflecting it. I mean, there were multiple Juve players offside, but if Vlaovic gets a shot off and it's a clean shot, nothing. But a little bit later, Gatti uh, gets the goal, but again, there was a call for offside. But in the right moment, uh, uh, it was not so got, got, got it. and then Vlaovic and brilliantly played move uh, Chiesa. I think it was. Um, I, I, I have forgotten now who got up. McKenny, I think, gives, gives the cross to Vlaovic. Beautiful, beautiful goal, but McKenny just at the moment that uh, Chiesa plays the pass is just offside and then the step back and you think he, when he resumes, but he's of course not offside anymore. Vlaovic was really frustrated with that one scoring against his former team, of course. Uh, and Juve had really control over the game. However, late on, uh, I think Nick, Nick Gonzalez saw a shot deflected onto the, 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 the crossbar and then there was another one where, uh, you know, the players are themselves in, in, in the way because there was a clear equalizer for Fiorentina if it wouldn't be blocked away but Duncan Fiorentina player so uh, in that sense yeah was in that sense lucky but you I think overall deserved that win and then on Monday evening yeah I was hoping at Inter drop points that we don't have this horrific Derby constellation. You know, I'm looking usually forward to the Milan der the Derby, although it has been relatively bad. But having that riding, that they can clinch the title against Milan, <sighs> it's a horror vision for me. It's absolutely this way. It's not any title. It's a two-star title. Yeah, that's the one that uh, both teams were eyeing in, uh, in the season. And I've said it before: Inter have 
a season for the ages. They this has 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 been one of the best seasons that any Serie A team ever had. The way they are going, the way they're playing, in addition of Inter uh, losing their best players every season and still becoming better. That clearly has to be said, but I don't want to have this writing. I also think uh, if Milan like throw the game now next week against uh, Solo, it uh, doesn't help because then Inter are already champions. And then you have to applaud them going in, 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 in into Derby, which yeah, yeah, you also do not want to. So I was really ho ho hoping Inter dropped that one. And while Chalnogl had two big chances and Inter were of course the better team in U U Udine, the Udine took the lead in the 40th minute through Samacic, a shot that got really deflected and, and you could see Dumfries and um, Sommer not being the same line. Sommer is looking, looking, looking at the ball, go all goes in it. It looks really, really, really weird, but I think a deflection makes it such that it was not clear who should go to go, go the ball. Um, however, Chalanoglu was, was a penalty, read, read too quickly with uh, the Udine goalie who had some great saves in the first half coming out and uh, knocking down Turam. Chalnoglu makes 1-1, but it looks like a 1-1. And then um, Anatovic has, has a good idea on the edge of the box. He, um, with the back, heals it to La. Lataro, Alexis Sanchez steps away. Lataro takes a shot. The goalie can only pull it onto the um, uh, post and it bounces back into Fratesi Pat, who gets the winner. Inter, one step closer to the 20th title. So, there you go. Uh, if we now see the matches for the next week we have of course europa league and there is the big uh milan roma mad mad match, match as well uh we have uh sassuolo hosting milan i probably will not see see this match but let, let's look at the other inter hosting cagliari not gonna do any anything as well we have uh juve against torino that's the big one however this is one of the most boring derby in all of uh europe i would say because even when you were bad torino can, can, can manage, to, manage to win it and yeah i think fiorentina against genoa might be one that could be potentially uh interesting one however it has not nothing to do with the overall standing so there you go uh i forgot bologna against monza that could also be that's a late 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 game but you know i'm probably sure, sure there are other good games there so maybe not the most exciting round coming up but it will hit the next level then a week later in any case that was it for me from Serie A. please let me know what you thought about the action this weekend. Where do you see the league going? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel and see more. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.